Did you know that even the top pros in the world struggle with their serve technique? And it's actually limiting them, keeping them from reaching their true potential. So you're not alone if you're struggling with your serve. And in today's video, I'm gonna break down the serve of an American player that could use a lot of work on his serve technique. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution. Some call me the serve surgeon. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step breakdown of what I would do if, if I was coaching this top American professional player. So let's get to the lesson right now. Let's take a look at this young American's serve motion. This is Francis TFO and he is one of the top Americans in the world, but he's not one of the top players in the world. And I think a big reason why is because of his serve technique. You know, if you look at the best golfers in the world, they're constantly upgrading their technique. And if you look at the best tennis players in the world, they're also refining their technique as well. Roger Federer's mechanics, Djokovic's mechanics, even Nadal's mechanics on the serve are simply better than Francis's. And we're gonna go through this right now. We're gonna look at his serve. Let's look at it in full motion here. And if you've been following from him, him for any length of time and you've studied the serve, you'll know that he has some inefficiencies. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through step by step the things that I see and the things that he could improve. Now. The first thing I want to point out is his stance. He has a what's called a narrow platform stance. So his feet are pretty close together, which I'm good with. Sure, we would like it to maybe be a little bit wider so that he could load back on his back leg a little bit more. But overall, I'm good with this stance. A lot of players will use a pinpoint stance where you move this back foot uh, before making contact and if they want to change their stance to a platform, it helps them to go to a narrow stance so they're not tempted to move their back foot up. So all in all, his stance falls in range with me. I don't have a back view, so I can't see how far in this direction to the left the foot is because that could impact his ability to turn and coil, which we're going to talk about in a moment. So first thing is his stance and his foundation. The next thing is what I call down together, up together. So when he makes his first move, notice how the arms go up together like that. So I don't like to see this with pro tennis players or even club players. I always like them to do what I call a four inch or a six inch turn or move. I like that first move to show some shoulder turn. Now we can't truly see how much shoulder uh, is turning, how much hip is coiling right now. But from this view, it looks, from all the videos I've watched over the years, it looks like he's not turning a lot. He's just lifting his arms. And so that's a big no-no. That's a power leak. That's an inefficiency where he could be using his body better. So if I were working with him, I would work on his first move right away. Now, the next thing that I want to point out is that he, as he's tossing the ball and he brings his arms up, look at that tossing arm. Look at how it comes way back behind him. That's what we call a bent elbow toss or a bent arm toss. And I really don't like this either. I would like this arm to be completely straight up and down like you see the best servers in the world. Now what's interesting is, it, of course, this player has gotten to a very high level. He's, he's at the top of the game. You know, he's in the grand slams. He's getting to the second and third and even fourth round. I think he got to a quarterfinal of a slam. So, so he's capable of playing great tennis with this technique, and so it just shows that you don't have to have perfect technique to excel in tennis. I just think it helps and it makes things more efficient, but that tossing arm, we would want to adjust that as well. The next thing I wanna point out is his, what I call a high elbow. So if I were to draw a line through his shoulders like this, we should see the elbow down in this range in that perfect trophy position. So when he brings his arms up, his elbows are, are high, or his elbow is high on his dominant arm. To me, again, this is inefficiency. Other pros have a high elbow. They make it work. They serve great. They even win grand slams. Patrick Rafter had a high elbow. So it's not to say that it's wrong. It's just not as efficient as it could be. Now, one thing he does do is he does settle in and drop his elbow down into a better position. But you can see here, again, if I draw a line through his shoulder line right here, his elbow is still above that line. So it's still considered a high elbow. 
Now, the next thing I want to talk about is something that we call a flat shoulder plane. So not only does he have a high elbow, but he has a flat shoulder plane. So what we want to look here, what we want to look at here is when you draw a line through the shoulders, does this line go to the court or does it go through the back fence? Now, right here, it's pretty close. If I drew a line all the way across, it's probably going to be right at the edge here, right? But if I back it up a little bit right at this position, you could see if he if you draw a line, it goes right into the back fence. At the very end here, right about there, actually not even there. So right there, if I draw that line, it's going through the back fence. So he has a flat shoulder plane. Now, this is an example of an athlete, of a tennis player that is such a good athlete. He's so strong and he's done things successfully a certain way that he can get away with it. But again, I'll go back to this concept that this technique does not match up with the best players in the world. It's not top 10 technique like Federer has, like Djokovic has on the serve. And ultimately, I believe this is hurting his power, uh, probably his consistency and even his accuracy, but definitely his power because I've seen him serve before where he's not serving, he's, he's serving under 110 miles an hour. Now, I know he can serve bigger than that, but this is a real issue. Now, the things he does well. He, he drops the racket beautifully. He's got a great racket drop. You can see this hand is below the elbow. He's opening up his chest. He's extending and pushing off with his legs. Uh, his contact point looks good. So a lot of things are very good in the serve from this point on. But a lot of things leading to this point in the motion are not very good. And again, if I were to review his serve or if I were to get on a court with him for one hour, which by the way, He's so talented. If he was open-minded and it took an off-season and took a couple weeks to make some changes, he could make huge strides. The first thing that I would play with is I wouldn't mess with his stance yet. That would probably be secondary. I'd work on his first move and I'd work on his, his tossing arm being straight and learning how to coil and turn. And if he could get the feel for that, I think a lot of magic could start to happen with his serve. And so, that's where I would go with it. I'd go with that first move and the tossing arm, getting that elbow in a better position. And then from there, he can just unleash into the ball. Now, I know, again, I want to reiterate this. You don't have to have perfect technique to excel, but it sure helps your body. It sure can prevent injuries. It can make things more efficient and it can make serving easier. And that's ultimately what I want for you. Now imagine what would be possible if Francis upgraded his serve, if he really committed to changing his technique. I think he could jump in the rankings with a bigger serve and all the things that I outlined today, he could follow step by step. Now hopefully this video helped you understand the serve better and understand how you can apply these principles to your own serve, because that's what it's all about. I wanna help you get to the next level. And the next step for you is to actually click below this video. There's a link below this video or somewhere in this video to pick up our free membership opportunity. You're going to get 21 free lessons. Included in it will be lessons on the serve, the forehand, the backhand, singles and doubles strategy, mental toughness, injury prevention, and so much more. So go ahead and click the link below somewhere in this video or somewhere, click in this video somewhere or somewhere below. And also be sure to like this video because the more likes we get, the more people find out about this channel. We wanna change the way tennis is taught around the world and help you accelerate your results. So go ahead and click that link below or somewhere in this video and we'll see you at the next one.